What's up guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about Basecamp's uh, recently released gem called Name of Person. Now this uh, didn't really get announced too loudly, but it's a fantastic gem. So every time I'm creating a new application, I have to decide what I wanna do. Do I wanna create a user model with first and last names as separate columns or a single name column? And I've usually just picked one of the two based upon the application if I need first names more easily, then I'll just have two columns. Name of person allows us to use the two columns but actually still assign as a single name and it's a great little abstraction from, or extraction from Basecamp, um, but also an abstraction around names which is a great example of how you can create a reusable class like this that you can include into your models and other applications. So this is great. Um, all you have to do is have a first and last name column on your model. So if you devise, make a devise user, put first and last name as extra columns in there. And then you have has person name that you add to your model. Then it allows you to assign a name to that virtual attribute. So it's gonna add the name attribute as a virtual one. That will then go and actually split it out and set your first and last name columns. And then you can ask your model for the name object. And now this, instead of giving you a string back, which you would probably normally do, just add the two words together, this is gonna give you a class instead. So then you can chain a method call on for full name, first name, last name, initials, familiar, abbreviated, sorted, mentionable, possessive. All of those options are available to you because this is basically creating a new instance of that class that has all of those methods and it knows how to take the first and last name and make those various combinations out of it. So it's a very simple class, but something that's very, very useful and uh, shows you that you can make these virtual attributes return an object instead of just like a string. Um, and so this makes it a lot more useful, useful and these name versions are now scoped inside of name and they're not being added to the user model directly. So let's take a look at how to use this in an application. So I have a Jumpstart application that I've created with an older version of Jumpstart. We will use this gem automatically in the future, but I'm upgrading an app with that. Um, so what we've done is we've changed the name to first and last name. That's the requirement that you're going to have to uh, add on your columns. You're going to need your uh, first and last name attributes on your model. So then you can go to model user.rb and you can add has person name to it. That's going to create that virtual attribute for name and then assign to the first and last name attributes. Now let's not forget we of course need to add that gem to our gem file. So name of person and we can save that go run bundle to install it and then run our rail server after that is ready. So now we have access to that name um, object on any model. So we could go to say our nav bar and rather than printing out the user's first name which would be directly accessing the database column uh, attribute, we can change it to this. So we can say current user dot name dot first and we'll print both of those out so you can see that but you will see that those are um, going to be equivalent. So we can sign up and still fill out a single name attribute field. So this is going to assign the virtual attribute, which will internally in the gem, which we can take a look at the source code for this. Um, it's very, very simple. So if we take a look at assignable name, I believe this is it. So here's what it does. When you assign the name attribute as a string, it will go ahead and then create an instance of it using a full name. So you give it one string, it doesn't know that there's first and last, it assumes that there's first and last inside of that string. So then you have a version of the object, and then you try and get the first and last name and assign it to those attributes. So when you assign the name as a string, then it will split it up and also assign the first and last name values. Then when you reference that name, so you say current user dot name, it will go and do the same thing, except it will instantiate the class using the separate first and last names. And of course, first name is required, so it's going to return nil if you don't have a first name filled out. So that's as simple as this assignment is, which is really cool. So you can see that 
The way they've structured this is that the assignable name um, handles just this stuff, but it interacts with the other class, person name. So in here, this is all the methods for full, familiar, abbreviated, sorted. You could go and extend this class and add some other options if you would like, and that would make it very easy to extend. So that's all they're doing for these. They're just checking to make sure, you know, if last name is present, then we want to do this. If there is no last name, we want to do just the first name. And so they have uh, handled all of those options very well. Now, you can also go in your model and say model user, you can say validates first name presence is true, but you can also validate uh, the last name presence is true. And so you can use this because assigning the name is splitting it up. You can use your validations against the database columns um, and have those made sure that you're still getting a first and last name, even though you're assigning just uh, the one full name. So let's try this out. Let's actually validate first and last name, but if we sign up here with just Chris, let's see what happens. And if we sign up, we're gonna get an error that last name can't be blank. And if we actually fill out my last name and hit sign up, we see that it works. And so your database validations will work just like normal. Um, but we're going to be using the real columns to validate against instead of the virtual attributes, which is great. So then you can see here, we get Chris and Chris here. That comes from accessing the database model directly, but we also can ask the name of person gem for the first name, but we can also get like the mentionable version, which is going to give us like an at mentionable version, which is no spaces, everything's lowercase, um, and you could put like an at symbol in front of it if you wanted um, to make it something that's easily mentionable in a comment system, tweets or whatever, something similar to that. Then you can do all your other versions like abbreviated and that's going to give you an abbreviated first name and their last name. And so if you do familiar, you'll get the opposite of that where you'll get their first name um, and then their last name is abbreviated, which is great. So this is something you've probably seen if you've ever used Basecamp before. They tend to use this format a lot, which I like. Um, and this makes it really cool. And so I wanted to point out this gem, namely because this is something that you can extract these ideas out into a library that you can reuse in many places. So has person name is the concern that you included. So this code right here, this line is actually what we're including here. So this is just like any other uh, concern. It's just a regular old concern and we include assignable name. So when you run this has person name, um, then you can have this name of person. Um, so what this is doing, this has person name concern is actually in the loaders, we'll go to the active record one because that's what we're using. This is actually including the has person name concern in all of active record base. And so the uh, thing is not every active record model is going to have a first and last name or probably only users. And so this allows you access to all of that. So we include the current concern in all of active record base. Um, and this is applied to active record base um, automatically when you load the gem, which is nice. So then you have access to running this has person name method wherever you would want inside of an active record model. And then it includes assignable name. And so it starts to feel a little bit like they're doing a whole lot of various things, but this is going and applying this stuff um, as it is needed. So this is being required whenever it's needed throughout your application. So this now uh, will include the assignment for the name value and the uh, return value as well for the getter and give you name stuff. So you can extract very similar things out like this for other features, but I thought it was great to show you uh, name of person because while it's very simple and does exactly what you would expect, um, this 
is a great example of how a very small feature like that can be extracted and then how you can go and make includes and concerns in a reusable way inside of a gem. So that is it for this episode. I know there's not a whole lot to it, but I really like this gem and I wanted to share that with you guys.